Hello, IT Savvy Yotes. My name is Cadet Tristan McKenzie, and today I will be talking to you about Zotero. For those of you who don't know what Zotero is, it is a Microsoft Word ex uh, extender and connector and also a uh, Google Chrome connector that allows you to make <clears throat> a citation in any given format that you wish, and it automatically makes the citation for you. It's super easy to use. Um, I use it for all my papers, and it's really awesome. So. Uh, in my Microsoft Word browser, here's a little example I wrote. So I'll write example. <clears throat> and let's say I want to make a citation. All I hit is add edit citation. I'll go into the classic view. I'll find the paper that I cited. Hit OK. It automatically cites it. And then it automatically updates my bibliography with the paper that I just put in. And that's and that is in the format that I told it to put it in. So for this example, it's in <clears throat> ACS format, American Chemical Society. Now for other classes, you may be asked to do, uh, you know, Chicago format or MLA or APA. Just get with your instructor, figure out what he or she wants from you, and then you can go into Zotero and uh, and choose whatever browser, whatever uh, format you want to use. So now I'm going to show you how to download it for your computer. Okay, so from a blank uh, Chrome browser, you're just going to type in Zotero.org. Okay, and then uh, I'm already signed in because I made an account, but you're going to have to make your own account um, when you when you do this. It's completely free, but um, first I'm going to select Download, and then I'll hit Download Zotero 6 for Windows. And as you can see, it just popped up a little download button. I'm going to double-click that. It's extracting. And since I already downloaded Zotero on my computer, um, it's probably just going to have me update it. Sorry about that. It's probably just going to have me update it. Um, so I'm at Welcome to Zotero. I'll select Next. I want the standard version. Zotero must be closed. So that's because I have Zotero open right now. I'm going to close that. Hit Next. It's checking my existing installation just to see if I'm up to date. All right, it's going to be installed in the following location. I'll select Upgrade. For most of you first installing it, you're just going to hit Install. OK, so once it's done uh, installing, you'll just select Finish. And then you should be able to open, up, open it up, or it'll open automatically like it just did. And you'll get a view that kind of looks like this. All right, so before I familiarize you with this, I want you to first make sure that you are um, you have an account. So um, we're going to install this Chrome connector first. So you install Chrome connector, and it's too easy. It'll say install to Chrome. Right now, I already have it installed, so I'm going to remove it, and then I'm going to add it. Add extension. Okay. And now, as you can see, it's up here in this upper right-hand corner. Zotero connector. I'm going to pin that. So that way, whenever I'm on a website, I can just hit this, hover over it. And as you can see, it says, Save to Zotero. I can just click it. And with the click of a button, my document saves. All right, so now you have the extender. You have the connector, rather. So now we're going to go back to Zotero.org. And I'm going to hit, so for download, I'm going to hit register because I'm a new user and I've never used Zotero before. I'll select register. It'll, I'll be prompted to put in my username, uh, my email, and a password and verify that I'm not a robot. And then hit register. Now, I'm not going to go through it because I already registered an account. But what you would do is you would hit register and then um, you would get sent an email. And the email should look something like this. It's a confirmation email. It'll say, thanks for signing up. Uh, click the following link in your browser to, uh, to confirm. So you'll click that link. And then it'll pull this, this link up. It'll pull up email validation. So here, what you're going to do is it wants you to set up Zotero syncing. So what this will allow you to do is sync your Zotero not only to your computer 
and also your iPad or your phone or whatever, but also to other computers and other users of Zotero so that if you're in a group project, you can have more than one person writing on an essay at a time and more than one person working on the same Zotero document and making different citations in real time. So it's actually a very powerful tool and I would highly recommend you sync. Um, it's super easy, three-step process I'll show you right now. All you do is type in your search bar Zotero. And I'm going to make sure this is pinned to my taskbar. That way I can just select it whenever I want to open it. But I'll select that. I'll hit edit. I'll go to preferences. And then right here in sync, I'm going to want to make sure it's syncing. So um, I'm going to unlink this account. All right. So this is what it should look like when you first go in. Um, you'll type in the username that you just created and your password. And then you'll say set up syncing. And there it is. So you can uh, download files at sync time. And that's really all there is to it. All right. Cool. So you now, you, now you have Zotero installed and you have the Zotero uh, connector in your browser. Now you want to make sure you have, before you go off to the, the runs, the uh, races rather, you want to make sure you have um, the Microsoft Word uh, add-on. So to do that, I'm going to go into Edit. I'll select Preferences, Site, and then I'm going to make sure <clears throat> I have Word Processors, Microsoft Word is installed. So it's currently installed. If this it says no, you're going to say, like, you know, you're going to just hit install. Um, I'm just going to select reinstall to make it, make it look good. It says it could not be complete because Word is, clo is closed. Oh, you got to make sure Word is, is closed. Okay. So it's obviously just because I have Microsoft Word open. Cool. Install. Installation was successful. Awesome. So now I should have the Microsoft Word uh add-on now if you don't have the add-on right so in this case i do it's in the ribbon right there if you just still don't see that after doing that process what you'll do is you'll select tools add-ons and you're going to want to make sure you have both of these on your libre office integration and also your Zotero Word for Windows integration. You want to make sure those are on. Now, if both of those are on and you just did the process I just outlined and you still don't have it, make sure you restart your computer and try again. If you're still having the problem, uh, definitely come and see me, but it should work after that. Okay, so now I have Zotero installed on Word, uh, Google Chrome, and also on my desktop. Um, so now let's say I'm writing a paper with my friends. We're doing a little uh, Chem 101 lab write-up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group, right? And it'll take me to this page that just popped up. It'll want, it'll prompt me to log in. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, and now I'm currently creating a new group. I'll say uh, Chem Lab 1. Create new group. And I can select the settings. I'm just going to make it public. Anyone on the internet, any group members can do the editing and file editing. Um, or do any group members? I guess we can't do that then. All right, save settings. Cool. And now it should automatically pop up on my Zotero app. Okay, so I just opened up my Zotero app. And here it is, ChemLab 1. It's just a little library. And I can select this add button to make a new uh, whatever like document that I just found, or I can. Um, and here are all the different different like things. Like so, let's say you're citing an email or a film, or you're citing an interview, a letter, magazine, all this stuff, manuscript. You're gonna do that a lot. Um, I like to also make a new like a new. Um, I guess you say like a new folder inside of it. So I'm going to say, um, let's say you're doing a lab on like uh, stoichiometry, right? I don't know why you would be doing citations of stoichiometry, but right. So you would just 
have a new folder there and in here you can save your stuff to that folder now how do you do that so like let's say for example your um paper on stoichiometry right you're just googling and you find a cool um let's say we'll go on google scholar google scholar is a pretty good um source for a bunch of like different scholarly articles but uh all right so this first thing let's say this paper suits my fancy and i really like it um i'll go up here to zotero connector and i'll make sure it has access to this website and i'll just select zotero okay awesome got it okay i'm going to save and as you can see, well, actually, you cannot see. Hold on. Go up a right hand corner here. Select Zotero, the little add on that I just made. And then you see this? This is the folder I just made, stoichiometry folder. Now, if I pull up my Zotero, here it is. There's the paper that I just saved. That's awesome. Okay. So, what does that mean? That means that whenever my buddies and I are writing our manuscript the guy that has stoichiometry he's going to write the fact about stoichiometry and then instead of waiting 12 hours or 24 hours and going back and forgetting where he found this fact and you know trying to figure out how to make this citation and all that all he's going to do is right now as he makes that citation or as he writes that fact he's just going to say add edit cit add edit citation sorry i just had a stroke there <laughs> So I'm going to hit add edit citation and I can choose whatever language I want to do. So I can do American Chemical Society. I can do Chicago. I can do Modern Language Association. I can do APA, American Psychological Association. I'm going to do ACS because I think that's the best personally. I'll select OK. And then this bar comes up. Now, if you're super cool, you can be like, uh, OK, I know exactly what the paper's called and type it in and then hit enter and then it'll automatically add it in for you boom there it is now if you're not as cool as that you can also find it manually by selecting this down arrow hitting classic view and then selecting the paper finding it in your library and selecting it and then just simply hitting ok and automatically adds it but what about the bibliography right because at the end everybody has to have a bibliography okay so for that i'm just going to make a new page right so instead of having to write, hand write it and make it all, all yourself and then your teacher takes off 30% and even though you have like a really awesome paper, all you're going to do is you're going to hit add bibliography and it automatically adds it for you. There it is. From here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say works cited, control E, there it is. Here's my works cited and it's in the format of ACS. And your if your teacher has a problem with that, that can they can take it up with the American Chemical Society because this is the format that they set in place. This is not what you formatted it as. This is what the American Chemical Society formatted it as. So when you're in there, when you're in that, um, when you're in your paper and you're selecting your first reference, it's going to prompt you to select um, whatever format you want it in, right? ACS, APA, Chicago, MLA. Make sure you cite, you use the right formation or the right format that your teacher tells you to use and you cannot be wrong right you're fine so after that i mean that's all there is to it there's the citation right up there and um here's my work cited so i'm going to show you in a different word document what it looks like to have um like a chicago style format like say if you want to put footnotes in okay so we're back in a fresh word document and Okay, so I believe uh, we're looking at how to add footnotes, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, I'm going to get a new Word document open. Okay. And I'm going to type in a history fact, right? And in my Zotero, I'll hit Add Edit Citation, Chicago. Make sure footnote is selected. Okay. And then I'll add my paper. 
by lurk, looking it up, hit enter, and it should automatically add that footnote. Okay. And then for my bibliography, it's the same process. All I'm going to do is select layout, breaks, and I want to select next page break, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So next page break, and then I'll hit Zotero again, add bibliography. There's my bibliography. And let's say I want to have page numbers, right? I'll edit header, page number, top of page, plain number three, add my name. There it is. Now let's say um, I don't want my page number to be on my bibliography page, which is commonly the case. I'll hit edit header. I'll select link to previous or deselect it so it's not no longer selected. Delete the page number, close header. So now my content is numbered and my bibliography page is not. All right, so that's all the time I have for today. Uh, in this video, you guys learned about Zotero, the power of using this as a an essay writing tool in, in making references. You learned how to download it to your desktop, how to download the Chrome extension, how to uh, configure the Microsoft Word extension, how to make a group project with Zotero. Um, and uh, you also learned a little bit about the format of you know, the different formats that you can use in Word. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to pull up this QR code for you guys to scan. It's just a satisfaction survey. Uh, this just lets me know how many people have watched my videos and whether or not they actually like them. So please, if you could fill that out, it takes like 30 seconds. Um, I really, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Have a good one.